Today let's look at using linear models in Section 6. We're going to talk about scatter plots. That's a graph that relates two sets of data by plotting the data as ordered pairs. And we're going to see correlation. Correlation is the strength of the relationship between data sets. And we'll create trend lines. That's a line that approximates the relationship between the variables or data sets of a scatter plot. And we can use trend lines to make predictions about the data. And then the line of best fit, that's the trend line that gives the most accurate model of the related data. And then finally, the correlation coefficient indicates the strength of the correlation represented by the variable r. And the closer r is to either 1 or negative 1, the more closely the data resembles a line and the more accurate your model is likely to be. First, let's visually look at correlation. You can see here that this is a high positive correlation and high negative correlation when you think about the slant or the slope in each of those cases. This is no correlation at all over here to the far right. And here there's some low positive correlation, but there's too many outliers on either side of that trend line. And then here again, low negative correlation with the same set of outliers that are too far away from the trend line. Now in this next example, you can tell that I've made a scatter plot by plotting the data points that were given. And I've got my ruler out here, and I'm going to choose to use the point 1, 2, and the point 4, 6. And that's going to be my two points I'll use to draw a trend line there. And moving that out of the way, let's take a look at what we've got going on. Okay, so drawing the trend line using the point 4, 6 here, point 4, 6, and the point 1, 2, we can calculate the slope. So our slope is 6 minus 2 divided by 4 minus 1. So our slope is going to turn out to be 4 thirds. And we've drawn the trend line through those two ordered pairs noting that these other pairs are close to the trend line. And estimating the slope, we can see the slope is 4 thirds. Then the y-intercept, if we go back to um, our equation, y equals mx plus b, if we use the point 1, 2, then y is 2 equals the slope, that's m, times our x, which is 1 here, x is 1, plus b. We're going to solve for b. So 2 minus 4 thirds is b. 2 minus 4 thirds would give us our b value. And our b value is going to be 6 thirds minus 4 thirds. So the b value would be 2 thirds. And using that piece of information, we have the trend line y equals m x plus b. So we have a trend line that pretty closely models that behavior. Next, let's take a look at creating a scatter plot using the fresh market price of Florida oranges in dollars per box. I'm going to model that with the TI Inspire calculator and add, first of all, add list and spreadsheets. Now in your notes, you'll have a handout in the packet for how to make a list and spreadsheets. So I'm going to go here and call the x-axis the year. So we want to label that year Y-E-A-R. And I'm going to put um, 1 through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1 through 7 in our year column. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's going to represent all the way up to 2012. And then in the Y column, we're going to name the Y column as price. So that would be price here. And we'll start out with that first amount as, let's see what that is, 840. 
So we have $8.40 in the first year, $15.99 in year two, $10.75 in 2008, $8.80 in 2009, $12.75, $12.91, and $13.12 for our last amount. Then if you hit control and the letter I, whoop, not there. So we want to get out of that. So press control I and we're going to add data and statistics and click down here. We want the year to be on the X axis and click over in the right column and we want the price to be on the Y axis. And there we have our scatter plot. So next we want to um, calculate and analyze for the line of best fit. So we would press menu and then four for analyze and we want a regression equation. And this should be an MX plus B, so that's number one. And there you can see our equation. So I've written that down. We're going to go back to our notes here and write our equation down. And you can see here's the procedure that we used at the beginning. Then using the TI-84, you have that set of instructions if you have that calculator. Or like on my screen, I've used this calculator. And here's the procedure for how to mouse over, how to get the graph, how to choose the linear function and how to get the regression line. So next we're up to this point. What was the equation for the regression line? And you can see that here in our screen. Y equals 0.357X plus $10.39. So we're going to round that up. And then using that value, what's the expression? expected price per box for 2013. So using this equation in this place of X, 2013 would represent year eight and that amount would be $13.25 and 2014 would represent year nine and that amount would be $13.60. So just to save time, I've used my calculator ahead of time to get that piece of information for us. In example two, we want to know, is there a relationship between the fat grams and the total calories in fast food sandwiches? And we're going to use the data on the next table here from different restaurants and we're going to set our view window for 5, 60, 10 on X and 300, 950, 100 on Y to be able to find the line of best fit. So let's go back to the calculator and get that information set up using the fat grams in the first column and the total calories in the Y column. So I've preset my calculator to be the fat cal fat grams in column A and the total calories in column B. And we have, I believe, 16 data points, 14 data points. And then when you do control and I and enter data and statistics, scrolling on the x-axis, we want the fat. Scrolling on the y-axis, we want the calories. And then go to Menu, Analyze, Regression, and we want a linear regression. So here's our regression equation, 11.258x plus 234.745y. So let's go write this down. So we know the line of best fit is y equals 11.258x plus 234.745.
So a chicken sandwich has 12 grams of fat. What are the total calories in the sandwich? So putting in X was our fat, 11.258 times 12 plus 234.745, and we find that that is just about 370 calories in that sandwich. And in the context of the data, what does the y-intercept represent? Well, let's see, if x is the fat, then that would represent if a sandwich had zero fat calories, so if we had a sandwich with no fat calories, I'm sorry, no fat grams at all, then the sandwich would have 234, roughly 235 calories to be a fat-free sandwich. If a sandwich had zero fat grams, it would have 235 calories. So example three is one for you to turn off your camera the video and try this on your own calculator device. And when you made a scatter plot, you should see a strong negative correlation. And how would you describe that correlation? So that would say it's a strong negative correlation. And my TI Inspire gave me a line of best fit of negative 7.907 plus 98.051. So if you're in that ballpark, you have done the right thing. And then Part D, correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation. So just because there's a strong correlation between the data doesn't necessarily mean that one set of the data is causing the effect that is occurring in the other set of the data. Can you come to a conclusion about this set of data for the computer use and test scores? So I would say that there's no conclusion can be drawn since the online computer time could be related to test prep sites. So you can come up with your thinking and maybe discuss that together as a class. And again, I said it something along this lines. In example four, the table lists the cost of 2% milk, and we want to use a scatter plot to describe the trend of the data and see if there's a clear correlation. So I'm going to use my calculator for T, or the X column is going to stand for the year and time, and I'm going to make 1998 be my zero year, and this would be year one, two, three, four, five, let's see, oh no, we're counting by twos here. Let's back that up a minute. So year 2000 would be year two, and 2002 would be four years, 2004 would be six years, 2006 would be eight years, this would be 10 years. I think we're missing some data. This should be, yeah, this is in the wrong spot on our table. 2012, everything needs to be moved down a little bit. So that's an error on my slide. So let's go to the calculator and see if we can get an image of this for us. So we want to clear this out. Start with a new document. We're not saving that old one. We're going to add list and spreadsheets, and this is going to be the year. And our first year is going to be the zero year, and then two, four, six, eight, ten, and year 14. 
and then back over here. This shouldn't be 12. That should be 14. So my whole column has me messed up again, just a little bit. So in year 1998, the zero year, we have 257. So this is the cost per gallon. And let's go, oh, no, no, cost. Challenging to do this. Okay, so cost. Oh. There we go. So 257 is 1998. 257. 257. And then 283 is 2000. 293 is 2002. 293 again is 2004. 310 is 2006. 371. And then finally 387. So we want to insert Control I, the data, and we're looking for the year, and then we're looking for the cost. That looks like a strong positive correlation. So let's go over here and say this is strong positive. And then to find the equation of the line of best fit, that's going to be menu, analyze, regression, and slope intercept. So that looks like 0.0942x plus 2.542. So y is 0 0.942 times x plus 2.542. Five four two, and nineteen ninety eight represents t equals zero. So based on our linear model, how much would you expect to pay for a gallon of two percent milk in twenty fifteen? So twenty fifteen would be three years more. So that would be t is seventeen in this case. And in the 17th year from this model, 2015, you would expect to pay $4.14 by substituting 17 in place of X there. This looked like the more correct graph or table for that list of data where 98 was year zero and then the next 2000 year was year two, and year four, and year six, then eight, then 10, then 14, and we calculated the year 2015, so the 17th year, and our estimate was $4.14. And we are finished with using linear models in lesson six.